Welcome to Chemistry Lab. Today we will show you how to make an organic light emitting diode, most referred to as an OLED, with a ruthenium complex active layer. An OLED is a perfect example of a combination between organic and inorganic chemistry. In this experiment you will improve your practical skills in the synthesis of metal complexes and the deposition of thin layers. We will start the experiment by teaching you how to synthesize the ruthenium complex. Next up, we will show you how to spin coat the complex on an ITO substrate. And after that, we will demonstrate how an aluminum cathode will be vaporized on the substrate using the glove box. Finally, the OLED will be tested. First, we're going to dissolve 0.083 grams of ruthenium trichloride in 8 milliliters of water. Do not forget that this chemical is corrosive. Secondly, 0.188 grams of 2.2 bipyridine will be added to the solution. 2.2 bipyridine is highly toxic, so be careful. Finally, add 0.44 milliliters of sodium hypophosphate using a pipette. Next, we're going to turn off the heater. Mark the water level and keep the volume at that level by adding water. The solution will now be boiled for 30 minutes. When the bipyridine is added, it forms a complex with the ruthenium 3 plus. At this point, the solution turns dark green. After adding sodium hypophosphite and during boiling the, of the solution, the ruthenium 3 plus will be reduced to ruthenium 2 plus. A bipyridine ruthenium 2 plus complex has a dark red color. This explains the visible color change during this phase. First, we made a new solution of 0.333 grams of sodium tetrafluoborate in 1.5 milliliters of water. This new solution will be added to the ruthenium solution. You instantly see the formation of crystals. Heat the solution till all crystals are dissolved. When the solution becomes clear, turn off the heater. Cool the solution down to room temperature or lower and wait for the crystals to precipitate. This is what the solution should look like when all crystals are precipitated. Next, the ruthenium complex crystals will be filtered using a Buchner funnel. Flush out the remaining solution with as little cold ethanol as possible. Due to the ruthenium ions in the solution, the contents of the Buchner funnel should be deposited in a container for heavy metal acidic waste. Dry the crystals overnight at 80 degrees Celsius. When everything went right so far, you've obtained beautiful orange crystals. Dissolve these crystals in 3 ml of polyvinyl alcohol and stir the solution till all crystals are dissolved. For the spin coating process, you need a double edged ITO substrate, as indicated in figure A. After spin coating, the substrate should have a thin ruthenium complex layer, as illustrated in figure B. The substrate will be finished by vaporizing an aluminum cathode on the substrate, as seen in figure C, and this will be demonstrated in step 5 of this video. Thank you. 
Before the spin coating process, one milliliter of PVA solution will be applied on the substrate. Try to avoid bubbles on the substrate. As you can see, we had a difficult time with that. Calibrate the spin coater at 2000 RPM and rotate for one minute. Repeat this whole process two times. To vaporize the aluminum cathodes on the substrates, place the substrates in the antechamber of the glove box and flush the chamber three times with nitrogen gas. By doing this, oxygen and dust are removed from the antechamber. This has to be done due to the fact that dust has a negative effect on the smoothness of the layer during deposition. Also, oxygen can cause the aluminum to oxidate while it's being vaporized. Inside the glove box there's a vacuum chamber in which deposition takes place. During deposition a vacuum is created which lowers the boiling point of aluminum from 2500 to 800 degrees Celsius. By controlling the temperature it is possible to deposit a desired thickness of aluminum per second. Here you can see the right positions of the substrates in the substrate holder. Close the substrate holder firmly. Secure the substrate holder onto the screw by twisting the holder upwards, as illustrated here. Place some aluminum rods on the tungsten plate and close the vacuum chamber. Start the vaporizing process till a layer of 2 kilo angstrom is deposited on the substrate. After safely removing the substrates from the glove box, it's time to test the OLEDs by applying a 9 volt current. Hopefully you've made a working OLED. Thanks for watching our video.